Oh my God. Oh my days, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, a bit of a sour taste, even through victory. This 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 is obviously not going to be sustainable. We need to be able to you know put up a 90 minutes of solid performance. Look, nonetheless, three points in the bag. We bridge the gap a lot more with you know teams above us, but that calamity at the end, that could have been disastrous. I mean, being 3-0 up at one point. And honestly, if you if you analyze the game, I, I've got so many good things to say about this particular team, especially in this performance against Luton. Um, against Crystal Palace, as I said, after the first 15 minutes of the first half, we were looking good. And then that equalizer really soured things and second half wasn't great. We still come away with three points. This one, it was actually totally different. Luton, so much talk about Luton that yeah, it's going to be hostile settings. We're going to find it difficult in a in a compressed pitch. But in all honesty, with or without the ball, we pretty much controlled the situation all throughout up until when we went 3-0 up. Like Luton, in, they didn't really have anything going for them in the first half, even when we were... Um, 3-0 up, up until then, that's when the disaster really happened. They didn't have anything going for them. In defense, we weren't shaky. We were quite resolute up until 3-0. This is, I have to keep repeating, up until 3-0. We were resolute in defense. In midfield, Conor Gallagher, Caicedo, predominantly doing all right. I'm going to come to the individual performances because Caicedo, there's a discussion we need to have and there's a discussion we need to have about in, in totalitarian in terms of the system, in terms of what the manager is doing, right? Up front, we were buzzing. Cole Palmer. Let's start with Cole Palmer, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. What a finish for the first goal. What a sensational take for the second goal as well, going around the goalkeeper. Obviously, kudos to Nicholas Jackson. And we're going to talk about a lot of people at Madueke as well. How can we? A lot of you guys have been waiting for Madueke to come at me. So I'm more than happy for you to absolutely unleash on me with Madueke. But Cole Palmer, ladies and gentlemen, for me, has been the number one 2023 summer transfer window acquisition in the entire Premier League, in my personal opinion. I can't think of another player that, in terms of value and contribution, has, has you know, has, has given that much. Uh, I know when you look at our overall situation for Chelsea Football Club being, what, 10th, 12th, this, that, the other, how can, how can you praise anyone? But from an individual standpoint, Cole Palmer, what a purchase what, 40 million or something, 45 million, something like that. He's already most likely doubled his value. And the, the, the critical finishing that this particular kid has is, it's stupendous, absolutely stupendous. His footballing IQ, and it's not a surprise, comes from Pep Guardiola school. So one of the biggest positive, Cole Palmer. Second one, Madueke, what an emphatic finish for that second goal. And you know what? I really like that second goal a lot for many reasons. One of them is when we were 1-0 up, we kind of fell asleep for a little bit. Kind of fell asleep for a little bit. And Luton were trying to, to, to come at us. Wasn't really creating anything huge, but they were trying to take the ascendancy. We soaked up the pressure and we got that goal off the back of a nice uh, you know, counter-attack or transitional play which led to Madueke to score that second goal. I love that because this is what I want to see. Look, no one's asking for gun-ho performance for 90 minutes. There are going to be phases in the match where you're going to have to soak up the pressure. But what do you do after soaking up the pressure is you have to hurt the opposition. I think we did that. So that was fantastic to see Madueke with that, with that emphatic finish. And look, he's now put himself in a strong position to keep starting for Chelsea Football Club. And this is good. You know, harboring and fostering good level of competition. This now means that Sterling or whoever else is not an automatic starter. Madueke, winner against Crystal Palace, excellent goal against uh, Luton, and overall a very, very good performance. Work rate was excellent as well. You know, everything that you kind of expect at this level. So the next Premier League game against Fulham, Madueke has put himself in a strong position to get another start. Nicholas Jackson, ladies and gentlemen, as well. This brother, I think we can now fully say that he's not a striker. He's definitely not a striker, but he may be a very handy, more than handy, winger or a central attacking midfielder, because, or, you know, second striker, whatever you want to call it. 
he is far better switched on, far better you know, clued on when he's a second striker or just coming from that left side. So that's something maybe we may need to explore down the track that even if we do get another striker, which we do, look, one of the negatives which we'll talk about down the track is Armando Breuer. And there's many other negatives as well. I don't want to harp just on Armando Breuer, but he had an opportunity to do something, was unable to do so. And um, you know, we, we definitely need a striker. But Nicholas Jackson probably has a place in this team playing that second fiddle just behind a striker. He looks he looks very much switched on. He, the way he turns that assist he provided for Cole Palmer's second goal, excellent. Overall, look, I wish he was able to score goals. Obviously, there's still mistakes in Nicholas Jackson. I'm not going to lie. Some of the passes were a bit mad, but it was something different. And this is what we saw against Crystal Palace as well. So look, there's something brewing with Nicholas Jackson in this particular manner, and that, that's something we need to we need to keep an eye out for. Petrovic, ladies and gentlemen, this guy. Look, we're going to now slowly talk about some of the negatives, right? That game should never be 3 2. It, sh it could have been 3 3. If it went for another five more minutes, it could have been 3 3. If it wasn't for some of the saves that Petrovic made, don't forget, he made a, uh, there was a cracking header, I think it was a shot, I think it was a cracking header, and he palmed it into the bar. There was another couple of shots that he had to make some critical um, saves. This particular goalkeeper, there were some really good distributions as well. Uh, he brings a sense of calmness. He brings a uh, sense of command as well. Like he doesn't get phased when it's, you know, crosses from corners or set pieces. Like he's there. Obviously, overall, we have a problem defensively in, in regards to crosses and discipline as well. The amount of free kicks we gave away unnecessarily creating pressure on ourselves was just criminal, just allowing Luton to come in. But Petrovic, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think Sanchez is a is a clear-cut, you know, undoubtedly just waltz back into the team. I don't think so. Now we can definitely say Petrovic deserves to carry on and see where this goes and see how he, can he develop even more? Can he become a bigger stature as, as a goalkeeper? But Sanchez, I don't think he just waltz back in. I think it will be an absolute disservice if he walks back in and Petrovic is overlooked. So Petrovic, another positive. Malagusto was strong as well, whether on the right side, whether on the left side. He kind of played a little bit reserved in the first half, maybe tactically because the pitch is a little bit um, you know, cramped up. He played a little bit more with defense, didn't really bomb too much. But then again, also Madueke likes to hug the touchline. But there were a couple of instances in the second half where he did bomb up and he looked really good. Excellent in defense. Even looked excellent once again when he went to that left side. He probably should have gone to the left side earlier. And we're going to now talk about some of the negatives. Look, first negative is 100% Pochettino. At 3-0 up, you could see... There was alarm bells. Luton were knocking on the door straight away. I don't know why this happened at 3-0, why players started to fall asleep. And this is probably the inexperience that kicks in in the team. We did that against Arsenal as well, 2-0 up, and then it became 2 all. So Maurizio Pochettino and those moments, us fans, when we're watching, we can see the match is turning a tide here. At that point, he probably should have brought in that Alfie Gilchrist. Once again, Alfie Gilchrist, whoa, he was explosive when he came on. So he's a good... Player to have, a young player to have off the bench. And this is how you want to utilize the young player. Give the experience off the bench. Get them buzzing. Get them performing. And then maybe the odds start here and there in a cup game, right? Against Preston coming up. Maurizio Pochettini should have sensed the danger. He's not sensing the danger. And the, by the time he sensed the danger, when it was 3-2, then bringing in Alfie Gilchrist, that by then it was too dangerous. It was already the tide, the flow of energy, the momentum. Everything was going towards Luton. And as I said, five more minutes and it would have been 3-0. It could have been 3-0. Right at the end as well, Alfie Gukris with a big, big tackle on that. Uh, Tahit Chong, he was ripping it apart on that on that left side, our right side. Um, so that Maurizio Pochettino, if he's unaware of danger it's not going to be sustainable. It really won't be sustainable. The other factor about Maurizio Pochettino, which is, I think, impacting some of the other players as well, in the likes of Caicedo, in the likes of Enzo Fernandez, we lack some form of system, man. We lack some form of um, know-how in the field. Yeah, we scored goals. We looked good in most parts up until that 3-0 lead, um, you know, when, when, when the calamity started happening, which was about 70th minute. But overall, there are certain players like Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez. You can see, you saw Thiago Silva post-match 
got so mad at Enzo Fernandez. And look, these are the players, Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez. Pochettino needs to find a solution. He has to find a way to create an, a, a setup that gets the best out of these midfielders. Look, people will sit here and say Gallagher has been shining. And of course he has. He's once again, you know, you know, absolutely outshone uh, those, those midfielders. Once again, he keeps doing a match in, match out. But if this is a race between Pochettino, Gallagher and Enzo Fernandez, Caicedo and Lavia, I'm telling you Enzo Fernandez, Caicedo and Lavia are going to win this race. Long-term contract. The owners have in invested a lot of money. Pochettino, if it comes between those three players and Pochettino to leave or Gallagher to leave, it's going to be those ones. This is why we see Gallagher up in the market. Whether we like it or not, these are some of the reasons because we've got so much talent, so much money invested in midfield. We, we, we can't be sitting here thinking their flops, get rid of them. We cannot. We cannot. We can't get rid of them. We pay too much money. We're not going to get that return on investment as yet. And these players are not bad players. I, I refuse to believe they're bad players. What's happened here is owners have and the board have created a team which is not completely suitable to the manager. So there's been a mis, mismanagement of selecting the manager here. They should have, if they known that they're, they're going for someone like Pochettino and that's the caliber of manager they want, they should have built a team based on what he wants. And we all know Mauricio Pochettino wants those robust midfielders, wants the Musa Dembele's, wants the Victor Wanyamas and the likes, right? He is not up for these type of one-touch system-based, you know, register type of a midfielder like Enzo or Caicedo or Romeo Lavi. He wants those robust midfielders, lots of physicality, lots of pace and power. So, but Mauricio Pochettino has to find a solution. So Caicedo, ladies and gentlemen, for the amount of money we've paid, not showing the value. Enzo Fernandez, another player who showed such quality last season. This today, when he came on against um, you know, Luton, he probably shouldn't have come on. There were times where players were just Luton players were just going zooming straight through him. So something to think about. Um, Armando Broya, as I said, another negative. He's probably going to be the player that's most likely going to be sold or sent out on loan. Um, but He's now been given chances. He's now been given chances. He's not really providing anything substantial up front. Um, in terms of defense overall, I think Levi Cowell, massive, massive negative as well. Uh, his performance are dipping match in, match out from that left side. It's clear to see he's not a left back. You know, if, if height is such a matter, then we need to look at a left back in the market that is tall and equally good from a left back point of view. Levi Colwell is just getting destroyed on the left side. Week in, week out. Defensively, he looks a bit fragile as well. And I don't think he really completely enjoys being a left back. So, look, overall, these are some of my positives and negatives. I'm glad with the three points. We're bridging the gap. We've probably made this match a bit too interesting for our liking. We shouldn't have done that. We should have been able to close things off at 3-0. Pochettino should have sensed, um, you know, and this is the difference between elite level manager and a good manager like Pochettino. you got to be able to sense to just cut off the match. At 3-0, it was time to cut off the match and you could see the opposition was coming. But look, let's hope that the team learns from this. A lot of people are getting upset with uh, Thiago Silva's you know, um, outburst at the end, you know, the journalists out there creating uh, a, a particular um, snippet of the of the entire interview where Maurizio Pochettino says, yeah, Thiago Silva loves to moan and complain all the time. No, but, but he also said that's good. That's good because he's creating standards. Thiago Silva has every right to be upset because, you know, we were looking good for the clean sheet. We're apps and Thiago Silva was immense in defense. Honestly, he was the man of clearances, the man of interceptions he was making. He was immense. So look, he's setting the standard. He's letting the entire team know this is not good enough. You've got to wake up. You can't allow the opposition to come back like that. You just cannot. We could have gone away from this match with one point or maybe nothing. Luckily enough, we got the three points. Now we've got back-to-back -back wins against Palace. And against Luton, we've got Fulham coming up in uh, next up in the Premier League. We can really be doing some 
you know, building up some good momentum. But we've got to tighten up our performances. We're only three points behind Manchester United. You know, they just lost against Nottingham Forest. So we are knocking on the door. We've got to keep going like this. January window is now upon us. So it's going to be interesting who stays, who goes. Lots of movement's going to happen. Uh, maybe a few players are going to come in. Obviously, a few players are going to leave for African uh, Cup of Nations as well in the likes of uh, Nicholas Jackson. So, look, interesting times ahead, ladies and gentlemen. Um, overall, let's be happy with the three points, but let's also be very cautious as to what's going on because overall, it's not going to be sustainable in this way. So, look, to each and every one of you guys, Happy New Year. I'm not sure whether I'm going to upload another video until uh, the New Year starts. Maybe I might. We'll see what happens. I um, might have a pre-recording done and have that uploaded. But thank you to each and every one of you guys for all the support you've given me. Much appreciated. Channel has obviously has grown so much. Once again, through the help of you guys. Smash up the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. And big up to Chels. Big up to each and every one of you guys. See ya.